So today we're taking a look at US elevator circle buttons. I'll be showing you how these work and how to wire them. So this particular button, as is very obvious, is the circle version. And these buttons have this very nice click sound to them. And we'll see why in just a little bit. However, this isn't the only type of button that US elevator made. They also made a square version, which is very similar to the circle in the way it presses. And I've actually worked on this panel in the past. And in the 90s, they used this soft touch style, which this fixture isn't wired yet, so, hmm, future video. And there was a vandal resistant version of the circle button as well. So not a ton of fixture choices for US elevators, but these are quite simple to work on. So the call button itself is very small, and generally speaking, these US call buttons are quite small. This was an intermediate one, so there's the up button which has the green arrow and the down one with the red arrow. And turning it to the back, we can see how these buttons are put together. So I've shown the inner workings of these on another video before, but you'll notice here that the plastic housing is held in by these two metal brackets. And these brackets can be removed and the whole button can be popped out of the housing. Now, of course, there's all this wiring on it, so we're not actually gonna be able to do that very easily. But pulling this button out as far as I can, you can see how it looks, it's just the cylinder and the whole button is just enclosed in it. So as for the electronics, there's only two main components and that's the switch and then the lamp socket. And there's a lot of these wires in the way, which I'm just gonna snip off. So now that these are cut off, we can take a closer look at the electronics. So like I said, there is a lamp socket and to remove that, there's a little plastic pin here and this pops right out. Now this is an MB type bulb. Here's the one that's in here. This is a 60 volt one, 60 MB. Then there's the actual switch and you'll see the way it works is when the button is pressed in, it pushes down on that little switch in the middle. And over here on the other side, there's actually a little spot where you could put another switch, but there's only one. So you can get an idea of how that works. It slides in this little spot and this little plastic thing locks it in. And the contact arrangement one is actually already shown. So the normally open switch, which is what we want to use, are these outer pins. Most of the time you're already gonna have wires on it, and in my case, this thing is pretty much already wired. But if you don't have that, you'll need the outer pins to make an actual switch so that when you push it in, it completes the circuit. So after removing that little clump of wires, there's only four wires that come off this. This one broke off, and one of them is the common for the two switches. This is the common for the bulbs. So the two lamps are connected together, and the other two wires would go to the controller to indicate whether you've pushed a button or not. We're not gonna be using a controller in this case, so the wire to the controller can pop off. And now we're only left with two wires, which is gonna be the positive and the negative. Now, if yours is not already set up like this and you need some wiring help, head over to my website and I'll have a nice little schematic down there and a little bit more info about these buttons. That might help you in case you get stuck. So as for actually lighting it up, as I said before, the lamp sockets are MB type bulbs. There's not a really easy way to stick an LED across this, like on Epco or other fixtures like that. So really using the MB bulb is your best way to go. And you can buy these online. You just search up MB bulb and you wanna choose a voltage that works for you. So let's say you wanna use a nine volt battery. You can get some of these GE 1847s or other six volt bulbs, or you could use a 12 volt bulb, which will be a little bit more dim. Now in my case, I'm using some 3.2 volt bulbs and we'll power them with two AA batteries. So once you've acquired your bulbs, it's just simple as putting them in. So as for connecting the battery, we got these two wires that are off the end here. If you're using an incandescent bulb like this, the polarity doesn't matter. So you can connect positive to, or negative to either or. However, if you're using an LED, you need to pay attention to the polarity of the bulb. So you'll put positive on the appropriate one. But if you hook it up and it doesn't work, you flip it around and, and see if it works, flip the polarity. In my case, since I'm using an incandescent bulb, I'm just going to put positive on this one, which goes to the switches and negative onto the common here. I'm gonna rewire this just a little bit so I don't have as many wires hanging off. I'm gonna re-solder onto here. You don't have to do that. You can just use like a wire nut or some electrical tape to connect these together if that works but I'm gonna, I'm gonna just shorten the wires up a little bit. And there it is, a completely wired US button. You can see here it lights up and it looks really nice. So these buttons are super simple to wire up and the square version of these buttons are wired the exact same way. The only difference is the shape. So you can apply this same method to the square buttons. As for soft touch, those are different. So I hope you enjoyed this video on wiring these US buttons. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next project.